Heavenly Father, we stand before you. We love our country. We love the flag that flies. We love this freedom because it's a freedom you gave to us. God, I pray that our young men and young ladies, our children, that these sights and sounds will live forever in their memory. That after a mom and a dad, a grandpa, a grandmother, an aunt and uncle have passed off the scene. I pray that they would continue the patriotism that we have enjoyed. God bless the service. Bless now the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May be seated. If you'll open your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, hold your place there. Romans chapter 12, I'll give you a few moments to find it. I understand that we're running about 15 minutes later than what we normally run at this time. But I think we're okay. I think the restaurants will stay open. I think that uh, everyone will be just fine. On June 26, 2015, our Supreme Court took a public and final step across the line of biblical abomination in the sight of God. In a 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court ruled, quote, the 14th Amendment requires a state to license a marriage between two people of the same gender and to recognize a marriage between two people of the same gender when their marriage was lawfully licensed and performed out of state, end quote. This decision should make our spirits sad and our hearts heavy, but it should not shock us. The Supreme Court has been marching forward to this decision slowly but surely since the 1960s. June 25, 1962, the United States Supreme Court took the Bible and prayer out of the public school system in America. The United States Supreme Court decided in Ingle versus Vitell that a prayer approved by the New York Board of Regents for use in schools violated the First Amendment by constituting an establishment of religion. In January 22, 1973, our Supreme Court legalized the killing of babies. The U.S. Supreme Court rules in Roe versus Wade that women, as a part of their constitutional right to privacy, can terminate a pregnancy during its first two trimesters. Only during the last trimester, when the fetus can survive outside the womb, would states be permitted to regulate abortions of a healthy pregnancy. When our country decided to have no regard for life and no regard for God, then we should not be shocked when they have no regard for the institution of marriage. However, where abortion has run under the radar and is not talked about publicly or bragged about publicly by ladies or families, same-gender marriages or sodomy will be thrown in our face on a daily, consistent basis. Where taking prayer and Bible out of the public schools has not impacted the church, but the student. Same-gender marriages or sodomy is going to impact the church and its religious freedom. Same-gender marriages will impact how the Child Protective Services qualifies a home. To leave a child in an abusive home is just as negligent as leaving a child in the home of a same-gender marriage. How the Internal Revenue Service it will impact how the Internal Revenue Service determines a tax credit for having children in the home. Now a same-gender marriage home will be given the same tax credit that a true biblical marriage home will be given, thus putting more of a tax burden on America. Same-gender marriages will impact 
how the church sanctions marriage. In time to come, you will see false request made to pastors who stand for traditional marriage. False requests will be made to men like your pastor to marry them knowing that our response will be no only to set your pastor and men like myself up for legal action that we have violated their constitutional right. I have a news flash for the nation, the state, and the city. Longview Baptist Temple will not be performing same gender marriages at this altar as long as Bob Gray II is pastor. Please listen to the words of Thomas Paine that were written in his treatise called The Crisis on December 23rd, 1776. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now deserves the love and the thanks of men and women. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. If Thomas Paine in 1776, 172 days after they declared their independence, could stand and declare that they were not giving in to tyranny, no matter what it cost them, then I wonder under our present pressure from the government that we are facing, if 172 days from right now, we will have the same resolve against spiritual tyranny that our forefathers had against physical tyranny. However sad and sickening the state of our nation right now is, here's the title for my sermon, I still love America. I still love our flag. I still love our 50 states. I still love our military might. I still love our streets and lanes. I still love our mom and pop businesses. I still love our small town walkways and our tall skyscrapers of the big city. I still love our state rights. I still love our freedom to worship the Lord. I still love our freedom to put our Bible on our dash and in our back window and duct tape it to our roof. I still love our freedom to carry our King James Bible. I still love our freedom to not only preach about Jesus Christ, but to personally at any time Time, walk up to somebody and ask them about Jesus Christ. Regardless of how embarrassed we are about our administration, we still love the Oval Office. Now, regardless of how disheartened and how, how, how we are about the lack of morality and integrity of some of the political leaders, we still love and respect the Senate and the House of Representatives. No matter how unfair the taxation is right now, I still love the roads and the infrastructure that our taxation has built over decades. You see, true love does not run when things are not perfect and palatable. True love loves when the flaws rise to the surface and the imperfection are on the front page. Because true love chooses to love when things are not perfect and right in place. And can I tell you, after wiping the mud off my patriotic rose-colored glasses, I have to tell you this. I still love our country. I still love her songs. I still love the red, white, and blue. And I have chosen to love America regardless of what America has become. If you think America is no longer the good place to live, then denounce your citizenship and go to another country. But I, as an American citizen, still love America. My text this morning is Romans chapter 12, verse 21, if you'll look there. It kind of is an odd text to choose for the theme of I still love America. 
But it is an appropriate text because of the decision that has come down from the Supreme Court. You say, why are you so up in arms about this recent decision? Because when you attack the institution of marriage, you are attacking the very essence of my salvation to my Savior. I am associated with Christ because of the blood that he shed on Calvary. The relationship between Christ and the church is likened to the relationship between the husband and the wife. If you destroy the marriage, you've destroyed the foundation of the church. The reason we can have a church is because we believe in a man and a woman can procreate at any time they choose inside the bounds of marriage and it be honorable in God's sight. But once you make us a marriage of one gender, we can no longer procreate. And once you tear down the fabric of Christianity, which is the family, then you have just torn down the fabric of the church, which is the family. How goes the family? Is how goes the church. And if the family becomes a one gender family, then the church will become a one spiritual gender church. And we will no longer procreate the gospel and people will no longer be saved. Romans 12, 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You see, the one word that best describes the tide in America right now is that word evil. The best phrase that best describes what is going on right now on this day after 4th of July is overcome of evil. It seems like it's now palatable to change your gender. It seems like it is now palatable to, to request a pastor to perform a same-gender marriage. But can I tell you, regardless of what the Supreme Court just decided, the verdict on sodomy has already been in from eternity past. Leviticus 18.22, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Le Leviticus 20.13, If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon them. So since the top administration has already decided then the lower courts, i.e. the Supreme Court, has no business deciding something that the higher court of heaven has already deemed in its one-to-o decision abomination. So what are we to do with this evil? What are we to do with the evil that's been served to us on the platter of government? Well, the thing we do is what Christians have always done when evil starts to overcome. We just turn around and overcome the evil with good. Some would say this, and biblically let me put it into true light. Some would say that our country is gone and that we are now going to experience the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah. I wish that I could agree with those people, but I must agree with the Bible. Go to Romans chapter 9 and verse 29. You say, why do you still love America and why do you still think that we have a chance in America? Because of Romans 9, 29. And as Isaiah said before. Where did he say it at? He said it in Isaiah 1, 9. And as Isaiah said before. Look at this. Except the Lord of Sabbath hath left us a what? Seed. I want you to underline that right there. Left us a what? A seed. We had been as Sodom. And then made like unto what? Gomorrah. Don't you preach rhetoric 
that scares our kids into thinking that this country is going to be overrun because the Supreme Court has just handed down a law. You listen to me. The Lord left a seed, a remnant in this country. We will not become like Sodom and Gomorrah as long as the seed is left here and as long as the remnant is left here. How many are saved? Raise your hand. Then my friend, you're the seed that is in the vile, wicked decision of the Supreme Court. But you listen to me. We're not going to be destroyed by Sodom and Gomorrah. You want to know why? Because there's enough of us Christians walking around that believe in the old King James and and believe that any evil can be overcome with good. We may be on the ground and we may have a bloody nose and the media may be at one and they may be at two and they may be at three and they may be at four. But can I tell you something? It's a long cry from 10. And there's only one that determines when the 10 count comes. And that's the Lord Almighty. So, because I still love America, I have chosen to do my part. You know what my part is? Good. Did you hear that? Good. In fact, I want you and I to say the solution word to this world we live in. Good. Are you ready? One, two, three. Good. Come on now. One, two, three. What? Good. So when we're being overcome with evil, we just turn around and overcome the evil with the what? Good. If you pull up stakes now and you run to the mountain now and you hide in the cave now, you are not being a biblical Christian in an evil day because the Bible says when you're being overcome of evil, you simply turn around and overcome the evil with good. Doing good is part of the solution. Doing evil is part of the problem. So when I do good, I'm part of the solution for the wickedness. When I do evil, I'm part of the problem. When my language is good, I'm part of the solution. When my language is bad, I'm part of the problem. When my entertainment is good, I'm part of the solution. When my entertainment is bad, I'm part of the problem. When my associations are good, I'm a part of the solution. When my associations are evil, then I'm part of the problem. I got a question for you this morning. Do you still love America? And if the answer is yes, then will you become part of the solution and no longer be part of the problem? The Supreme Court was nothing more than a end of what society gave them to rule on. Did you hear that? The Supreme Court doesn't make the case. They do not create the case. They are simply handed the case. How did such an abominable case get before human beings? It is because we put up with the overcoming of the evil and said nothing. We put up with the little by little overcoming of evil. It overcame our mind, then it overcame our television set, then it overcame our radio, then it overcame our entertainment, and it overcame... And we have nobody to blame but people who did not recognize the overcoming 50 years ago and who have taken their spiritual surfboards and have gotten up on top of the wave of evil and have ridden it for self-pleasure. So how do we, what do we do? We simply start where evil started. You know where it started? It started with the knowledge of good and evil. In fact, the first time you see evil mentioned, it was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And you know what the Lord said? Stay away from that knowledge of evil. And when you stay away from that knowledge of evil, it won't get into your heart 
and it won't become the imagination of evil. And when it stops becoming, the, when it gets there and it becomes the imagination of your evil, then guess what? It'll become the doing by your body of the evil. And then you get enough bodies doing evil of the same degree, then you've created a fad and a fashion in a society. And it is sad to me to see Christian young people get into a fad and a fashion that is nothing more than the knowledge of evil that has been planted in somebody's heart, that has come out in somebody's body, and people are making money of it. But Christians believe it's okay to get on this wave and act like we want to act and do what we want to do let me tell you something it is not okay to act like you want to act and it is not okay to do what you want to do and it is not okay to take your freedom and smoke marijuana and it is not okay to take your freedom and run around on your wife and it is not okay to take your freedom and shoot your body up with drugs and it is not okay to take your freedom and get drunk and get in a car and exercise your freedom and kill somebody on the highway it is not okay to take your freedom and to make somebody else's life miserable so what do we do because I still love America then Bob Gray has made even more of a conscious decision to be part of the solution and not part of the problem when I leave this auditorium and I shed, if you will, my clerical duties of my clergy job, giving the word. I, citizen Christian Bob Gray, must walk out into that world. And when I walk into that world, I am going to be part of the solution. I am not going to be part of the problem. I would hate to think that somebody doubts their gender identity because my wife and I didn't hold enough hands in public. I would hate to think that somebody doubted their gender identity because I wasn't a gentleman and held the door open for ladies. You see, it all comes down to the grassroots movement of Christians in their daily lives doing good. And I think when we cease to do good, evil always prevails. And I'll end with this. Let's not let the small minority of snobbish people make us think that they run the country. I read this and I thought this was great. A snobbish young Englishman visiting George Washington's home at Mount Vernon was so patronizing and condescending and insulting to everybody there, the guards, the caretakers, because as he walked around, he would from time to time point out something that George Washington got from England and every time he would point it out he would point it out as if to say see England gave you that England gave you that the guards the caretakers the the the, the butlers the doorkeepers were getting mad the wrath was picking up but it was only when he stepped into the garden that the old gardener, Shep Wright, aged, he was the first scouts to settle the war. When the Englishman snobbishly said, ah, good man, the hedge, that hedge, George Washington got that hedge from dear old England. The old gardener said, reckoned he did. In fact, he got this whole blooming country from England. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Don't let the snobs tell you that they got America. 
Because this still is one nation under God. And when you and I in time to come look back on this time and our grandchildren ask us what was the country like when they made it legal for two people of the same gender to marry. Tell them. It was a very dark day in our country. But it did not stop us believers from marching forward with good. Overcome evil with good. Heavenly Father.